When we first come up to the router and it's turned off, you'll notice that the head is all the way down against the spoil board. We need to turn the machine on first. So that's right here on this gray box. There's a little on switch. Go ahead and push that on. After I get the machine turned on, I'm going to come to the computer here and I'm going to open up the interface that I need to uh, operate the machine. And so I can click right down here in the tray on the very bottom. I have a shop saver and I can open that up. Now, this was open previously. That's why you see some things here. If it was closed down, when you open it up, you might just see a blank screen, which is fine either way. The first thing we need to do before we try to do anything is home the machine. So if I click right here and click home, it's going to have the machine come up to its home position and measure to this far corner right here, this corner closest to me, and make sure that it knows where it's at on the table so the machine doesn't accidentally come off at some point. And right here by the computer, there's an emergency stop. Just quarter turn that button and now I can click home and I got to click it twice. So I clicked once, I'm going to click it again. And now the machine is going to start homing itself and it takes a minute to home. It's going to make sure it knows exactly where it's at on the table. All right, when the machine has stopped moving, okay, if we look at the computer, we can see right here that it tells me that it's finished home and that it's done, it's ready to, to be used. So before we start actually running the machine, we have to click warm up. And what the warm up does is it allows the bearing or the spindle to spin for about 10 minutes before you start running pieces. There's a ceramic bearing in there and if it's not warmed up, it can crack. And if it cracks and it damages the machine. So we wanna make sure it's warmed up first. So if I double click warm up on the screen, the machine is going to jog over to the center of the table where hopefully it's out of the way and nobody bumps it. And then it will run for 10 minutes. When the machine's done running and warming up, it will move itself back to the far left-hand corner and that's how we know that the machine is done warming up. Make sure you don't set anything on the tabletop while the machine is running because that machine is gonna move by itself when it's done warming up and we don't want it to knock a board off or push a board into a person. All right, now that the machine's back there, we're gonna go ahead and uh, change the bit out to the correct bit. We're gonna hit the emergency stop here. This prevents it from turning on. So if I'm touching the bit, I don't want it to accidentally start up and cut my hand. So I'm gonna push the emergency stop and then I'm gonna change out the bit. So I'm coming back here to the head. What I'm gonna do is pull off, just grab this fuzzy stuff and pull it down. It's magnetically held on. I'm gonna take my wrenches. I have two different wrenches that we're gonna use. This black one's gonna go on top up underneath on the spindle side here and catch on there. And this wrench here has all these little splines on there. They need to all four of those little splines be up into the nut of the collet there. And then I can loosen that. Now from heat and friction and tightness, I've loosened this, but the bit hasn't come out. So I'm gonna put my hand underneath there. I'm gonna take my wrench and I'm gonna tap on the nut only, not on the collar, not where the threads are but on the nut. So I'm going to hit that nut and you can see just a couple light taps and the bit will come out. We want to catch this so it doesn't hit the floor or hit the wrench that's on the table and get damaged. Now I'm going to take the collet all the way out and there's some dust and stuff built up in there that you'll need to clean out. It's good to change this maybe after every sheet or so. After you run a sheet, take the bit out, make sure it hasn't moved around, it's not full of dust. So I'm gonna clean this out by tapping it on the table and cleaning out all of those little channels that are in there. Then you'll find the appropriate collet depending on the size of bit you have. There's several different ones. We're gonna do the quarter inch bit, so I'm gonna put this one in. 
And I'm gonna just line it up there. This tapered edge goes up when I load this. So I'm gonna load that in there. I'm gonna take my nut and put it on there just about one screw turn worth. I haven't gotten it tight yet. And now I'm going to take my bit here and I'm going to load this up there. Now you need to find out which type of bit you need to use. This one is the one we're using for today. Going into the bits is a whole other long series of videos. Today we're just going to use this one. We're going to load it in there and push it up. I want to push it in so the majority of the shank is in the collet. I want this to hold on. I don't want it to vibrate loose. So I'm gonna install it so the majority of the shank is in there. I don't wanna clamp onto the fluted parts that are actually sharp. And then I'm gonna hold on to that while I tighten that nut up and get that secure there. Once it's secure, I can move my hands out of there, the bits in there, but it's not tight. So I need to take my wrenches again and put those back on the collet in the, in the shaft there. And now I'm gonna tighten these and make sure they're secure. I'm gonna take the dust boot and line that up. There's some magnets, there's some holes that it's gonna line up with underneath here. So I'm gonna line that up and put it roughly in place and it should kind of magnetically catch on there and sit nice and even when it's in place. Now we're gonna go back to the computer. We're now back here at the computer. We've changed the bit and repositioned it so now I need to click tool height right here in the middle of the screen. And that's going to have the tool or the machine measure how far the tool is sticking out. So if I double click this, oh, my emergency stop still on. We can see that on the screen. It says emergency stop. I need to make sure after I change my bit that I quarter turn that button and it pops back out. Now I can hit tool height. And the machine is going to run over to the back corner and it's going to touch the pad back there. We'll take a closer look here. The machine is going to touch this little white pad with the bit. And that's, going to, that's how it senses how far out the bit is sticking from the spindle. The machine is just finished measuring the tool height. Now I'm going to load a board on here. And the way I want to do that and have the board orientate itself right is I'm gonna click pins. This pin button right here above tool height is gonna cause pins to come up out of the table, which will allow me to align my boards to. If I click this, these metal pins have come up out of the table, and this is what I'm gonna push my board against as I lay it on this sheet and push it over here. All right, I've got a piece of wood up here. You can see it's laying on here. I need to pull it tight to these pins, and the easiest way is to go to the other side and push it over so that I align nice and tight to those index pins. I'm gonna push it over tight to those pins and push it down tight. And now when I'm done, I should be nice and tight against those pins there. And you can check over here that we're nice and tight all the way down, okay? Once this is in place, we need to vacuum it down or suck it down. So over here on our wall is where the motor switch is at. We're gonna hit start and this is gonna vacuum it down to the table. So now it's vacuumed down, I can push on it and it's not moving because the suction that's sucking it down. Now that the machine is all set up and ready to go, our board is loaded, I am gonna come over here and hit file and open. We're gonna look for the file that we saved that was a TAP file. So you're gonna look through the list of stuff, maybe make sure you're in student projects, find yours, click on it and open it up. So it's gonna preview your pieces that you're gonna cut here. You can see in this little preview screen down here, the cuts it's gonna make, the dotted lines are the movements that the router itself is going to be making, you know, the jogs to the each corner to make its cuts. And then since the preview is loaded, all I need to do now is hit enter on the keyboard and it's gonna run the job. So anytime something goes wrong and I'm in this menu, then I can just hit escape on the keyboard and it will tell you that the job was aborted by the user, not the machine, the user did it. And it tells you some information. Another alternative, if something's going wrong is hit the emergency switch that will stop everything immediately as well. If you're working in a spire at the same time that the router is running and I'm over here working on stuff, I can't hit escape 
and have the machine stop. I have to be active in that window for the escape button to work on the keyboard. If I've just run a job or started a job and I want to go back to Aspire, I don't want to hit the X up here. If you accidentally hit the red X up here, it's going to close this system down and I'm going to have to restart. So let me show you. If I close that, it's gone. And now when I want to operate it, I click down here and it's going to open up a brand new window. All of the code that's run before is gone. If I tell it to file open a job, it's going to tell me that I've got an X, Y, Z, A. And that means I need to home the machine. So now I have to hit home and wait for the machine to home itself again. I don't necessarily have to warm the machine up again because if it's been in the last 30 minutes, then I'm good. If it's been more than a 30 minutes and now you're uh, trying to get this going again, then yeah, you'll need to warm it up again. As always, if you have any questions, please talk to your instructor and get those questions answered.